when when you bring somebody into your company, the person is looking like, hmm, where can I steal? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> do you get all? Oh, where can I make some side Imagine money? Imagine being a CEO <laughs> and you're just <laughs> and you're hiring people that are going to come and steal from you. No. no. Hi guys, and um, welcome to another episode of the I Move Back podcast with me, Shalawa. Dr. P.O.G. Yes, and we've got a wonderful guest here, IBK. How are you today? I'm fine. Thanks for having me. That's good. That's good. Um, so IBK, just tell us about yourself. What do you do? Um, okay, so I'm um, Ibuka Dini. Um, I'm a software developer. Nice. I don't code that much anymore. You okay. know, I'm more like a product manager. Nice. Nowadays, but I, I, I do a lot of other things. I have I'm a serial entrepreneur. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So let's let's hear them. What 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 are the things you do? Because we we're trying to dive into a little bit more ah, deeper. Man. That one will take us a long time. I do. I, I mean, real estate. I do oil and gas. I do. You know, in Nigeria, you just have to do like a lot of. So things. your problem solver, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what people solve. Yeah, yes, exactly. Oh, that's, nice. that's good. And where were you born? Um, Lagos. Lagos. And yeah. you've been in Lagos your whole life? My whole life. Okay. <laughs> this is the that? perfect person that I want to interview. Exactly. Because like your perspective of Lagos, I want to know what do you, like, what do you think about Lagos? Ah, uh, you know, me, I, um, Lagos has everything. Fortunately, I've traveled, you know, I've traveled at least to a couple of countries. I've been around the world and I can, I love Lagos, you know, so I don't know how you, you like my perspective because it might be a little bit biased because my own is Lagos, Lagos. I can't live anywhere else, you know. So yeah. you're, you're born and raised in Lagos, but you, and you also love Lagos. Yeah. You're not trying to run away from Lagos. No, I can't, I, I can't, I can't cope anywhere else. <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I can't cope anywhere else. Why is that then? Um, One food. Mm, you know, foodies, I have yes. to have that pepper. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's no pepper. No, anywhere but else. let's let's let's, say, let's. I want to make this clear. though why is that Yoruba food is so spicy? We love it. I need it. <laughs> I need to have extra. It's not even spicy enough. Pepper. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Pepper, it's pepper. Yeah, because when I travel and you go to a restaurant and you say. Um, make it spicy. They just pour some curry, curry and some shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll give Tabasco. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's the pepper, man. That pepper. I understand it. Okay. You know, like when you go to some other places, you it takes time before you can understand the culture. Every area, every country has its own culture and you know philosophy or whatever you know so i love lagos because i understand it i understand the language i understand so once you understand the culture you it, it, it can work for you mm. you know so it works for me you know i know what the challenges are i know the problems i need to solve and i know how to tackle them so that's what gives me purpose mm. you know every day you know i'm trying to solve those problems so what, what are some of the um kind of hacks that you can give people that if you want to survive in lagos uh, it, it, now, when you say hacks, like there's so you know you have to you have to hack everything. So like, <laughs> I, I, so tell me the sector, like tell me where you know. So so for me, <laughs> with girls, like yeah, like, <laughs> so, like what's your hack with the girls? With girls, yeah, yeah. Mean, uh, with girls, you know, you know I don't sound nobody should come for me, Sha, but, <laughs> but you know with girls is money. Money, yeah, just yeah, money. money, just have money, man. Just keep making money. Out. <laughs> Everything is good. Okay, what's okay. the hack for money then, in Lagos? For money, ah, there's many things. Oh, there's many things. Um, the the leverage, right? Mm. So let me just put it like like this: leverage. You know, um, if you have to. Ha if you have, so, you just have to leverage whatever it is that you have, you know. So if you have a rich family, I advise you to leverage that. If you don't have a rich family, I'll tell you to go and look for somebody that is rich and leverage relationships, you know. Um, Lagos is not really the place, Ni Lagos, Nigeria is not really the place that um, I, that is very, very conservative. You know, things don't change quick. 
Mm. Right? Mm. So you don't want to feel like, oh, um, I'm Elon Musk and say you want to bring something that is so crazy and you want to do something, mm. it's going to take a long time. Mm. Do you get so you'll be poor for a long time. You know, so the, be <laughs> the best... <laughs> I, I know what that feeling yeah, is like. Yeah, <laughs> all, all, all crazy innovators <laughs> thinking you're coming and just change this game. Yes, no, yes, so yes. you want to blend into the system if you yeah. want money now you want mm. to you want to enter the current system you want to be able to enter and leverage on the current system mm. and change things slowly mm. so that's how you make money you know that's a very interesting that's a good good interest that's very yeah. interesting yeah so how do you deal um with staff i really want to know how to hack my staff, staff. Hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Not no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have to go straight into that because that's why I need to learn how to like deal with that. I find that tough. Um, so yeah, how do you? Okay, so for me, it's it, it, ah man, <laughs> that one is hard. It's like hard. Really you know, hard, it's hard yeah. if you if you want to relax. You understand? Like the thing in our generation, you know, in our own time, you know. We the nature the type the way we want to do business is more chill. We don't want to be shouting in the office. Mm. We don't want to do you understand. So that's what makes it difficult. If you want to do core business, then you have to do business the way, you know. I have uh, a grandma that does like she the recruitment process of a company is is almost like by referral. Do you understand? Mm. So, and it works. It so scales. she doesn't hire somebody unless they refer them to her. It, it, somehow, there's there's some form of like connection, mm. right? So, the, so that gives like a a sense of like loyalty. Life in Nigeria is hard. Do yeah. you understand? So, as a worker, it's difficult for. There's no incentive to almost work. Yeah, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So, majority of the incentive to work is. When when you bring somebody into your company, the person is looking like, hmm, where can I steal? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> do you get, oh, where can I make some side Imagine money? Imagine being a CEO <laughs> and you're just, <laughs> and you're hiring people that are going to come and steal from you. No, 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 I'm no not, I don't true. want to say it in a bad way, no, but, but the person true. wants, like, there has to be an opportunity to make some side money. Yeah, yeah. Some side money. So if I'm, you know, coming into a company, I want to see, if I come into a company and everything, CCTV, every, no opportunity you're going to have no opportunity to make any side money and you're not offering me one shit salary like <laughs> i'm just going to i'm just going to sabotage yourself like, oh, i'm going to sabotage man. you so that you know that <laughs> there's good. something wrong right with so we so doing business is you know that part is kind of hard so you have to create another small little economy in your business where they can steal money yeah I had, I had a friend that said that. He said that one time he had to pull his staff away and said, please, guys, let's just break even before you continue to steal. The stealing is just too... Yeah. He said he begged them. <laughs> and even maybe design your business model in such a way that your staff have opportunity to, like, More. there's... To grow, mm. you know, on their own, to their own career path and things that you have to be able to put those kind of things into consideration. If you are just getting staff to come and serve you, serve you, serve you, you know, the money is not good unless you have a lot of money and you can pay people, you know, so much, you know. But the companies that do very well, you'll find out that there are companies that people within the organization were able to find a comfortable fight to grow mm. and you know make some money on the side and things like that you know but if it's just so um where you have the hardest problem in H in hr is in like the lower jobs mm. like waiters cooks mm -hmm. things like that you know those jobs are like below below a hundred thousand naira, you know because that's it's not a lot of money but how do people live on that that's my it's like it, it, yeah um so what do you don't think leave then? now <laughs> to, when it comes to stuff uh what would you advise would you advise getting like a, a graduate and grooming them to be what you want or would you get someone with experience that's worked at other companies but the problem i hear is that if you get someone from that's worked at other companies they can import the bad culture they learned there to your business mm. so what would you advise someone to do in a startup it depends on what you're doing, right? And what you're looking for. Um, so, 
there's another problem you get in Nigeria is like there's a real lack of like talent. So for me, let me tell you how I solved my problem. When I started, the first company I started was um, an e-commerce company called Warehouse.com.ng. So you know, I used to do it from my room. I sell phones online. This way back, like when at the beginning of e-commerce, 2012 or something, you know. And, you know, it was good business. I used to do it alone and all that. So then we had um, Conga and Jumia. Mm -hmm. Jumia was Sabunta or something, and, uh, and Kasua. So they were now raising a lot of money. You know, I'm on the news every day and I see Jumia raises $100 million. Ah, ah, what's in the apple? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did the same thing. Like, ah, ah. So I said, okay, you know what, let me scale. I used to just sell electronics. So I focused on one market. So I started down there to scale, right? I, at the moment, when I started, I could do my business by myself, right? Mm -hmm. I could, no matter the amount of others, I could handle it just with my phone in my room. You know, and it was okay. Then I decided to expand, increase inventory and get staff. It was a disaster, right? Because every, there was just opportunity for many things to go wrong, mm -hmm. you know? So I left that. I left that. And I now started looking, okay, let me do something more challenging you know i mean something more i wanted to code when i mm. built my e-commerce i did it with um content management software like wordpress right so it was just it wasn't like so i wanted to build i saw uber i can remember i met someone that came from america and showed me uber and i was like what you know i used it and i so i started another company you know I now, that's how I met GD. Mm. So we met online when I was learning to code, right? Mm. Okay, so we now started writing code, blah, 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 trying to recruit developers. That's the first time I faced like serious HR problems. Mm. So you get developers, you get people that don't have experience, you know, that have some experience or just know how to do the thing. And you, once they get experience, if then you can't afford, you don't have the money to hold them. Do you mm. get? Because there's a huge talent gap in Nigeria. There's yeah. a lot of people that have the potential to learn a lot of things, but they don't just know those things. So a lot of people go into jobs to go and learn, then they will leverage that. Mm. Do you get? So I get my first job, I learned something. So for the entrepreneur, it can be a little bit hard because for like a, an SME, mm. you know, because um, you will be losing the good ones. You lose the good ones very fast, right? So what, how I solved that problem was I started the school. So I school. Started, yeah, I started okay. the school um, and I started teaching. So till now I still teach, mm -hmm. you know, not as much as I used to. But So I started training developers, you know, they will live with me, all that. So um, then I... They, so you tell I, them that if they if they leave your office, you're going to leave them, kick it, them out of the house? And of course, if somebody wants to leave your company, they will leave, they, uh, do you understand, like... You know, but of course there were challenges, mm. you know, but it helped you get the part, the fact that I was teaching, at least it, after I teach you, maybe it takes me four months or five months. At least I'll still have you for maybe another four months mm -hmm. as a staff, you know, till. Mm. So I was able to do that, leverage that for a long time that's to be able yeah. to solve that problem. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's how even at Errand, yeah. where I'm product, product owner today, um, that's how we started, mm. you know. So it was we just employed all the students at, at the time, mm. you know, and started this new company. Okay, then that's that's very helpful and that's insightful, insightful to know. Um, so talk to us about Erin then. Um, what's Erin trying to do at the moment? Okay, so Lagos? what um, Erin is trying to do is what I've been trying to do for a very long time, right? Um, with my first startup, e-commerce, you know. Then I went into, I sold electronics, tried to sell other things, then went, started another one called Buka, trying to sell food, you know, blah, blah, blah. The major, or getting um, Nigerians to buy online and fulfilling those transactions mm. is a huge challenge, you get, which is what I've been trying to solve for many years. And many people have been trying to do it as well you know you see a lot of people but if you look at the market for nobody has really really everybody's just really really scratching the surface you know even when you look at the big guys like jumia they've not really nobody can comfortably say that 
there's no website where you can go and buy anything you want and yes. get it delivered. Yeah. You, it's either really? they don't have all yeah. the products. We're not yeah. even. We haven't even started that market yet. Yeah. But what 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 of those? Um, yeah, I've bought from Jumia. I got some stuff delivered to my house. Yeah, but it's, so you can get some products on Jumia. You can get all products on Jumia. You can get even majority. There's so many things you can get on Jumia. Yeah, there is. And the time it takes. That's another thing. It's the fulfillment too. I've ordered and waited two weeks, and something's never turned up. Have you, yeah. Have I've, you ever ordered and they give you something else? That hasn't happened to me. Actually, no. That's happened to me once. Yeah. Those those are even secondary problems. Mm. Do you yeah. get the fact that. I can't buy, let's say, I can't buy, um, um, I can't buy maybe um, plates, a certain or, type or, of plates. Oh, okay, okay. Do you get, yeah. like, if I want high quality plates or something, you yeah. know, I can't get that on Jumia. Yeah. But that's if the I, question because like, how, how often do people buy, oh shit, how often do people <laughs> buy if I went to go for it? You just need to go to the market. How many people buy like expensive plates so, for them to justify stocking those things? No, but there's a lot of stuff you can't buy on Jumia. I'm not going to lie. There's so that, many things. I, that's I, why I you used, just have yeah. to go to the market. I'm like. not going to lie. I'm someone that likes to buy things online. I, I, I was someone in the UK. I had Amazon deliveries every single day. Literally. Yeah. So I try to bring that mentality to here mm. and buy everything online because I hate house. going to the shop. I hate going to the supermarket. Mm. There's so many things you can't buy. You have to literally go yeah. to the stores. To even buy, yeah. things that you wouldn't like, you would even expect to be able to buy online, you know, like, especially, there's so many things you can buy online, yeah. you know. So th there's not a lot of like penetration and it's because of, Jumia is doing like the best. You know, they are, mm, yeah. they are doing so much. They're doing very, very well. You but think the there'll, be, there'll really be an Amazon, like, oh, of, course. Of, of course, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Of uh, course, Jumi has done a, a lot of work. They've spent a lot of money. They've learned, you know, it's a lot better now, you know, than, of course, some years back. And it's getting better every day. But, I mean, we're still just scratching the surface. There's still so much to be done for it to even just be okay, right? For yeah. it to just be... For and for me, for the average Nigerian to think of going online first, do you get? Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, true, true, true. when I want to buy something, you know, people don't. It's not. It's not. People don't think like that. Well, like of see with tech, right? I feel like the main the main thing that it should really enable is that trust side of things. It's like <gasps> trust is for me. Trust is key in Nigeria. Being reliable, because, like, right? Yeah. yeah so agree, yeah. if you're if you know that if I go on a website, and I'm gonna all of this. That like is gonna to come to my house in a certain period of time, and it's gonna be that thing that I ordered. Yeah, that alone, right, is kind of ingrained in people's mind, and they're trusting your product uh, more. I, I I don't think so. I think it's um more of the market, right? So, in the UK, in the US, if I want to buy an iPhone, um, there's Apple is in the US, right? Mm. So if I want to buy an iPhone, there's no supply issue. Mm, Do you understand? There's Apple no store, yeah. GS, even if I buy it from Carphone Warehouse or buy from anybody else, Apple, they, 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 Johnson, there's a supply chain management, it makes sense. But in Nigeria, it's people that went to the UK. But So there's no structured supply chain for products. Mm. Okay. Johnson, mm -hmm. GS. So it's just a, like a free market you get any, you know, every almost every product. And we use a lot of foreign products. But, yeah. but why are, is that the case though? Why is there no structured like... Supply chain management or whatever it is. Then. Because those companies are not just here. You know, we have LG, we have Samsung yeah, here, yeah. right? And that's about it, you know? Um, we have Apple, but it's not like Apple, Apple. It's like uh, some yeah, guy no, that does... It's like Apple, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really Apple. Well, literally. <laughs> you know, yeah, so, like... But can I ask you yeah. um, about importing and export? Because that's something that um, I... that. I want to understand, is it easy to actually import goods here or do you need a guy in customs to rely on? Oh, I've um, got a story. Do they, do they, yeah, because do they charge, are they, how do they charge the customs fees, etc.? Like, what's your experience with that? Okay, so the problem, and this is one of the major problems in Nigeria, things are not straightforward. You know, the government has so much control over everything and they make laws that, they can enforce. So mm -hmm. that's what breeds corruption. So for instance, now, imagine if the government says that, oh, you shouldn't smoke cigarettes indoors, mm -hmm. right? In an indoor, you know. So what happens is 
And that law cannot be enforced in Nigeria. I know in the UK you can't you if you in blah blah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, but I think license. somebody tried to pass a bill like that in Nigeria. That kind of law cannot be enforced. So what happens is if somebody gets caught for that kind of thing, right? And and maybe the law says that person should go to prison for two years or whatever, right? The policeman himself knows that that law doesn't make sense. So what happens is if he's just gonna take a bribe. Mm. Do you understand? Because so he's doing you a favor. But but wait, there's one situation that bribe didn't work. Really? <laughs> during what COVID, happened? there was one nightclub that was that they were saying no during COVID said nobody go out to party. Yeah, right? the curfew, mm. yeah. Then there was one nightclub that was open. I some people came from UK. So they were partying <laughs> one night. So they and they messed them up. I saw the And then the police they came. They took to jail. I know, I know they took all of them to jail. Yeah, I know, I know someone that they, they got packed all the way to jail on the mainland. Yeah. yeah. So that's an example of, of it actually working. Like, if they no, say... No, it doesn't... It doesn't that, that's... That, that, but there were a lot of nightclubs That was still open. Yeah, Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? So that was like scapegoat. It was a scapegoat incident. Did you get, yeah. That was a scapegoat incident. Yeah. That's not... You know, so... But a lot of clubs were open. Customs? People were saying a lot of things. You know, it's, it it wasn't. It was too difficult to enforce. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So like, so you so know. Are you saying for customs that you you have to bribe or, or? No. So it depends on the product. So there are laws, right, yeah. that guide different things. So some of those laws are like don't make sense. Okay. You get some of those laws, you... and they're like loopholes. Okay. You know, I can't really tell you what law. Yeah. Do you understand? But like some of those, they can tell you maybe the taxes on some certain products, blah, blah, blah. Then there's, so there's opportunity for cost, customs to take bribes on okay. certain products. Okay. So for instance, if the government says um, no foreign rice, right? So they ban the importation of rice mm -hmm. because they wanted to improve local production, mm. right? And but yet we all still eat foreign rice, right? Everybody, I'm sure the president is so eating foreign rice. At a higher price. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, there's still foreign rice everywhere, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, what happens? Somebody, somebody at the customs store that more. The people are bringing this rice, so I can't stop them. Let me just Take this money on. that Boyri doesn't want to collect. Let me be collecting it for him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So that's just it. <laughs> so, so um, that's where we have issues you know mm. we make laws that are not sustainable yes. we don't everybody somebody just sits down in his house in abuja and just thinks of an idea and just does it you mm. know you're not thinking about the the consultation no consultation yeah, yeah we don't we don't do proper research we don't we don't have a lot of um, problem solvers in government we just mm. have dictators everywhere mm. we just have tiny tiny dictators and it's just causing problems so yeah you know, you just have to know how to. Yeah. Yeah. And so I know you said you love Lagos. What's your opinion on other states and especially doing business in other states? Oh, um, so Lagos is like, Lagos is the is the most commercial, as you get, mm -hmm. has the largest economy, yeah. you know. So any other states, you can do business anywhere, you know, it depends on the business you're doing, you know. Lagos is dope because, okay, Nigeria has one fundamental problem. Politically, I also love politics. I do a lot of political um, stuff, right? Um, we have one fundamental problem. We have something called the exclusive list, right? The exclusive list is a list of industries that it's only the federal government that can do. Aha. Like mining. Mm. Interesting. Right? So like mining, like a lot of things have to do with natural resources. Mm. You get crude, mm. whether even... Just name it, you know, even uh, um, timber or whatever, you know, these are look, some federal government, some state governments, right? So, and in some of these inner cities, you know, like if you go in uh, in Oshun State, in some of these places, Nasarawa, that is a place that if Nasarawa is going to thrive, right, if there's going to be a major city in Nasarawa like Lagos, is going to be a city that is going to be built on the stuff in the ground. Mm. Do you get it's going to be the richest man in Nasarawa is going to be the guy that owns the company that is mining. The SMEs are going to be SMEs that are solving problems of um, maybe transporting products or refining products that mm -hmm. are being mined. Mm -hmm. Do you get there's going to be an economy around that, mm. right? They did a summit recently, I think. It was right. A natural summit. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they do all those summits, but that's they are, but the fact that. 
At the, end, the only way for you to encourage is, is to get out of the way. You can't you can't leave it free for all because it, we, we know Africa and the history of people coming to come and steal our precious things under the ground. We're stealing what? I, I don't like. You, so that was I know, that conversation. I know, I know your view <laughs> is you believe um, most of Nigeria, mm. most sectors should be privatized. Yes, yes. I yes. know that's something that you believe. In, yes, yeah. yes. Everything should be privatized. Majority of it should be privatized, mm. like because it's it's business that will solve problems. Yeah, I agree Do you get with government that. doesn't government is not good at solving problems, right? They're not they're not very good at it. They they most of the time just complicate problems. People, you know, it's ego and you know. So I mean, we've heard a lot about things that are not working in Nigeria. I want to talk about things that are working though. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. what what do you think like Nigeria is good at? And they're like, okay, this is really encouraging. This is going everything well, that the government is not doing. I mean, see media, <laughs> see media, see we are here. Do you know there was a time in this country that television used to start at four o'clock, really? four p.m. Yes, and if that. you wanted to do this podcast right now, mm. you have to know somebody in NTA. Maybe wow. somebody's auntie and beg her. They were like just three TV stations. Yeah. So oh yeah, that's why the, the and they were like yeah. government run TV stations. See another thing I was thinking. You know the, the way things are very bureaucratic in the past in Nigeria. Still now it's still very bureaucratic, right? Mm-hmm. It's a lot better but now. Do you feel like Nigerian mindset is still set in the way of doing business in the past through a bureaucratic way rather than it, the way it is now? For example. In the past, you can to start this podcast. We have yeah. to ah, oh, we need to go and know this person that know this person that has this studio. But meanwhile, you can just go on the Instagram and just message the person that just hey guys, can I use your studio next week? Yeah, like but things are changed. But Nigerians are still thinking they're bureaucratic. They would rather speak to somebody that knows somebody than go on Instagram or go on X Y Z. I've been told that. In fact, I was told that by a guy. I think I wanted to. It was something so simple like going to Badon. And he was like, why would you go? You're supposed to ask me or ask someone who yeah. knows the hotel owner. To t- and I'm like, you know, don't need I you, nigga. Like, yeah. <laughs> but then I sat back and I said, actually, he's not wrong. Yeah. This society is probably better to get, in the most circumstances, a referral or, or you know, get pushed mm. in the right direction. Um, but then from a business perspective, but there is less licenses needed or or or, or what because I've heard different stories I've heard like for NAFDAC registrations it's very expensive and there's not the actual price of it you should see it's, my industry it's lubricant that I'm you like... need yeah <laughs> so so um that yeah so that is a good question do you think that people still operate in, in the old way sometimes in business um you you have to you know okay. because we've Nigeria was a communist country for like a very long time <laughs> you mm. understand what i'm saying like you know we've always moved between socialism communism you understand like uh, you mm. know when it was colonialism um socialism communism you understand we yeah. always move one cool take us to this and they'll do an election so we've always <laughs> moved. where are we at the moment now right <laughs> now, now we're we? more in like socialism you know i hope we're a capitalist place oh it's uh, not capitalism we're capitalist we're in media Media, in, media oh, okay. in telecoms, you know, in some few sectors, but for the most of it, we're still very, very socialist. So, is like, it, isn't the socialist memo to kind of take care of the people? Eh, boy, that's the problem with it. That's it now, but it doesn't work. You can't take care of anybody. Oh, Do you understand? Man, like, the UK can get you. away. The UK can get away with socialism and giving free healthcare because they have Africa to exploit and make money from. Right mm. in a country in Nigeria where we don't have anybody giving us anything, the government can't take care of anybody, and they should stop trying. How, how much of the UK GDP is actually coming from exploitation in Africa, though? There's ma- so many things. So it's actually uh, there's... not just the UK, but yeah, when you when you study the um, import and um, guys, you should go on the website. There's um, details on this. And if you look at the, the trade uh, yeah, deficits, I've, I've if you put look some at on there, yeah, if you look at all these countries, the website is moveback.com. I'm moveback. Go on yeah. moveback.com. But when I what I did when I was um, doing the import one, I saw for example the top three countries that we uh, export to was surprisingly Netherlands, um, India, and Spain. And Nigeria was the largest exporter of scrap vessels in the world, which I was surprised about. And then most of it is also oil and minerals, uh, like mm. you said, natural resources. That goes resources. to uh, yeah. Dutchland, right? Exactly, uh, Netherlands. Yeah. yeah, natural resources. Yeah. And when I start, looked at other African countries, it's the same picture, like around everywhere. It's all natural resources that, I mean, the, the most valuable company in Africa is Anglo-American. They're in South Africa. Well, That's the mining. Anglo American oh, do okay. a, an Anglo American platinum. They're mm, the most yeah. valuable companies in the whole of the continent. 
and it's um, run by uh, white people mm. and um, they're in South Africa. And uh, Okay, yeah. so, and Fela had this song, right? Um, I think Colonial Mentality or something like that, where he spoke about um, the one of the coups that happened, mm. you know, and he says that, okay, yeah, the white people came and they taught us so many things, right? Fantastic things. They taught us so many. Amazing. The white people are, you know, <laughs> Uh, the one in front now, uh, the one doing everything, right? And they taught us all these nice, nice things, but they forgot to teach us. There's a few things they didn't teach us, like for instance that the military cannot take over. Something mm. as simple as that. Mm. You get during the first school, okay? The Queen of England, yeah, the most powerful. Nobody can, you know what I'm saying? Uh, why is it that when the military took over? It didn't change anything. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, if you know, it cannot happen in the UK, it cannot happen in the US. Then for, why, yeah? Do you get, then yeah. why did it happen here? Do you get? Because, and that's why, like, you have to understand that is interest. This life is just interest. So, the UK doesn't mind if um, Buari is the one that controls all the minerals, the resources in Nigeria, because it will guarantee their supply. Mm. Do you understand? And Buhari is okay with that because the money comes to him, right? He wants, it's about power. People want to be, you know, if people want to have power. People want to be Do you king. think? Do you think it's easier for like diasporans to, to leave where they are and come to play in Nigerian politics? Of, 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 of Nigerian course. origin? If, but you, you have to know what you're doing. Do you understand? Like you have to, you have to understand the game. Because some people are probably watching this thinking, what, what would it be like if I came to Nigeria to play Nigerian politics? You have to understand the game. Once you understand the game, like, it's easy. You know, it's grassroots, it's, it's animalistic. Do <laughs> you understand? You have to be, you have to be cold. You, get, yeah. you can't, you can't, Nigeria is, you just have to be cold. But can I ask, you know, I'll be honest, don't you think the wider society is like that? Don't you think that to operate in Nigeria, you do also need to be uh, like at least 50% animalistic? If we're being very honest. Anywhere in the world. No, no, I'm talking about Nigerian society. Because you know, you're you describing politics, be, you but I think be, it applies to the whole country. You, you have to be yeah. 100% animalistic. To like, be in Lagos, right? To, to be in Lagos, you have to be anywhere yeah, in Nigeria. That was my observation exactly. when yeah. I first came. It was like, the rawest form of humanity is here. Yeah, there's no free lunch here. <laughs> yeah. like, hey, there's no free lunch here. You have to, every day, everybody's trying to kill you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's trying to kill you every day. Every day. Every, so, like, you just have to, you, you have to, you have to protect your interest at all times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, get, you can't try to help anybody. Mm -hmm. You can't try to do any, you just have to protect your interest, do what you have to do. Mm. Along the way, Right by creating value by doing things, you're going to help people, mm. whether you like it or not. Do you understand? You know, yeah, but you yeah, can't. Well, you know, this thing you shouldn't be. You shouldn't have a socialist mindset. Yeah, coming to do a charity. Oh, do you understand? Right like, to me right now, you, boy. You, 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 you can't have a socialist mindset that oh, uh, oh, these African people that are naked and give them clothes. No, do you understand? Mm. You have to. You have to think about how to get money from them. But then again, let's let's say you're you're, you're so you're thinking about to, to get money from from Nigeria's, yeah. But you know, there's there's some businesses that are thinking about how to get more money coming into Nigeria. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, there's no, there's, <laughs> <laughs> the issue was is like, how do we get more money coming? Because I know I know some people like. So you, I, I want to talk about this a little bit, yeah. But mm -hmm. like, what do you think about this whole uh, white man coming to save Africa? Why am I not come to save Africa? No, you know, there's you the whole... Now, yeah, now, the, 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 the whole new trend of like... Not new trend, but it's been there. It's like, ah, oh, this person has some funding here to go and do some project, charity project or whatever is in this location <laughs> or X, Y, Z. Mm. Charity. Like, <laughs> it's a so... charity. As in, are you saying, what charity project? Like, who's doing charity project? But then are again... like UNICEF or something like that? I don't know. Just those kind of bodies, like, like um, NGOs and X, Y, Z, right? Uh, you so, know, those, those NGOs are... They are, they have a completely different business model. If you want to operate an NGO, then you know you are doing an NGO. Do you get it? that's mm. a completely different business. Do you get that's you know so you're thinking about CSR. You're thinking about um, so CSR now is like you give out a certain amount of your profits, you know, and you get tax reduction. Mm. That's 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 business. Do you understand what I'm mm. saying? So, and you, so you give that money and you, you, you can even use that money to do anything. 
you can buy you you can be my political partner and you sell wheelchairs mm. right and i can use my that donate, money to buy donate wheelch- more wheelchairs <laughs> each other, use that money to buy wheelchairs, wheelchairs you. you need that you're getting <laughs> two million and i'll share you understand? so it's all business like you know it's all so if you want to be an ngo then be an ngo mm. you understand? if you want to but if you want to do business then you have to think like a businessman any business that you want to do mm. it has to be about making money you know yeah, it has right. to be about making money making money has to be at the forefront of forget about any other thing you just have to make money mm. so aaron aaron's business model um yeah. it'll be good for like the listeners to know so what exactly um is the business model right now so um we're solving problems of um doing business doing commercial transactions in nigeria right so right now we're doing logistics right so in the layman term you're going to help me move my goods around is that what yes, you're doing yes yes so um we are focused right now we're focused on last mile logistics so that's moving your products um within um lagos do you get from one point in lagos to another do you get we hope to be able to move across the whole country you know in the future but for now we're focused on um, moving products within Lagos. And what are the challenges? Because I always say, Nigeria, if I was to pick three top problems to solve, I always say it's um, energy, um, energy, light, well, that's energy, mm. um, logistics like and road network and security. I would pick kind of those top three. So right now, what are the biggest challenges that Erend has been facing, aside from HR, uh, in the logistics industry at the moment? Um... So we've we've solved a lot of the problems. We faced a lot of problems at the beginning. The HR was a big problem. You know, it affected us in operations, right? So being able to like being able to execute transactions, you know. So is how how do I put this now? Okay, so when you when we started, right, one of the major problem challenges we had is responsibility. Who does what? Do you mm. Like who who when if I if I want to send something to you, right? When the rider picks up, who is supposed to call me to who is supposed to call you to inform you? Is it the rider that is supposed to call you? Is it the company that is going to call you? Um uh, who carries liabilities? Mm. Do you understand? Like who, what, what does, how to keep the rider on check? Why, as a rider, if I pick a parcel from me, if I get tired, what makes me, what Want compels to me sure to have to yeah. make sure yeah. that I get that product to you? Because I, yeah. I ordered food the other day, right? And, and I tell you what, this guy went out for two hours. <laughs> I saw the, it's the, the driver driving oh, to my house. He was driving the other direction. <laughs> They pick up other rides on your ride. I'm thinking, what before. is going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally, and then he called me like two hours later to say, I've already asked someone to make food for me. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, yeah. So, so solving those operational challenges. Mm. So, we had to look at the landscape and share. It's a power thing, mm. you know? So, in America, you know, I like the Republicans when they say, like, everybody should have guns. Why does that, okay? I need to understand this because I'm clueless about this. Let, let me okay. let me explain. So let why me, are they? Why do they want? Did they want to kind of take arms against the no, Americans? No, because people? when everybody has guns, everybody would there will be more respect. Do you understand? When one mm. person has gone, that person is king. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. That person makes the law. We can't argue. We can't. Do you understand? That's why America is so free. You know, it, it, because the government is forced to respect the people. Mm. Do you understand? So it's the same thing with logistics. Like when the rider has all the power, mm. do you get is the one with the pass mm, so is yes. the one yeah. that is, yeah. is the one with the, he can do what he Everyone, has yeah. to do. Yeah. Do you get, can do whatever he has to do. So you have to so be So you able want to, to kind of put some punishment against the rider as well for not delivering to certain standards. Yes, you have to be able to penalize the rider. Mm. You have to be able to share power. You have to who even gives the rider the trips. Okay, so initially we used to if you if I place an order, mm. right? The order comes to our company, right? Goes to Aaron, right? And Aaron now puts it out there that okay, which rider is available to do this? Mm. 
So we are realized that we're giving too much, which is how Uber works. Mm. You get so you book a trip and they send it out to drivers. Which driver is available to do this trip? With Uber, the reason why it works is because there's a control mechanism in the car with the driver, mm. right? So if I if the Uber comes, I'm entering the Uber, I'm with the driver. Jonas mm. is one on one, so he can't tell me that he wants to go and see his mom, mm. right? <laughs> I'm saying, bro, take him to my. We can't. But you can have GPS and all this stuff now, because I know there's, there's like um, well, dispatch rider companies that have. Yeah, you can GPS track, but stuff, I've, yeah. I've watched that on my phone him go around and take other trips. You no, know, there's like there's like three GPS. There's a GPS on the bag of the item. There's a GPS yeah. in the in the in the, the, the GPS bike, and then there's a GPS on the phone. The GPS yeah. doesn't solve the problem because the rider is not trying to say. He did not not deliver. Jay, he's not yeah, he lying. He wasn't trying to hide he's it. He's impunity. Yeah. He doesn't care. He's not hiding it. He'll go where he wants to go because he has all the power. He has the password. He has the money. He has. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it, so it's just it's power. Do you get? So you have to be able to share the mm. power, share right? Power. Mm. So, so what we did was we got another third party, mm. um, third party. So there's the three PLs. So the companies that the riders work for, mm -hmm. right? Before we would send the trips to the three PLs, mm -hmm. right? Once they get the trip, you know they are busy. They, they can just do. In fact, they may not even really need the trip when they will even tell you that when they will even accept it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? They may be overworked and they, like okay, rider has the capacity to do ten trips a day, and I'll see. But some maybe let's say ten to fifteen, right? Fifteen on the high end, ten on the low end. Mm -hmm. And I'm on like 11. My rider is, I can say, let me try 12. If he, if I don't do it, mm. uh, nothing will happen. We'll do it tomorrow. Yes, or yeah, just, yeah. Uh, we'll what, later, yeah. you know, so they just take these trips. Like they have too much power. So mm. we reduced that. So we got something else. Another, um, like we divided um, responsibility. So you re there's a job description described as operator. Mm. Right, so you register into the platform, and your job is to facilitate trips. Oh, okay. I will give you ten percent of the cost of mm. the transactions. Right, wait, 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 wait. slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm trying to get into this. this yeah. So, so the operator takes ten percent, yeah, of the cost of the transaction. Of the cost of the transaction. Yes, it's just an so, independent entity. So, is that if I have a bunch of bikes, I can come as an operator? No. Okay. An operator doesn't have any bike. Doesn't have anything. What does he do? The operator's job is to make sure the bike, when the bike man picks the item, the bike man gets it to where it's going to go. Oh, so sorry, the operator yeah. decides which bike man is gets it. Human what. being, AI. yeah, you know, human, human, being. human being for now, you know. Mm. We hope to be able to turn it into an AI one day, you know. So if each human being will be processing each other, yes, man, your, your people are crazy, man. That's going to be yes. work. So, yeah, it's, it's it, on the long run, it would. It will be a lot easier. Mm. What happens is the operator now begins to have personal relationships with the rider, right? Ah, uh, but but imagine you know Nigeria the operator will be like, guy, if you give me more rides, I'll give you five percent. I don't mind. I don't even mind. Do you get if the, you know? I don't even. We. I would like to encourage that. Mm. Do you get like that? It's do that whatever thing you said earlier. Give them room to be able to chop extra money. <laughs> I, I don't money. mind if a rider wants to tell an operator that I'll be giving me more trips as long as he's delivering. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Because so we took away the power from the three PLs of the trips mm. and gave it to the operator. Mm. Do you get it's not us, it's now a third party. Third party yeah, do you get you know that, yeah. that is making sure that can penalize you, mm. that can. If you are, if a company is messing up, can say you know what the person has no. We now, when we try to do it internally, we we're having challenges because there's sentimental reasons on our side. Mm -hmm. We don't want to fight with our partners. We don't want to. But an operator can fight with a partner. Mm -hmm. Can fight with a bike man. Can talk to him anyhow. Can understand his language. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like when a bike man says, when you say, "Guy, where you did?" He knows when you're lying. You know, there's a mm -hmm. lot of human connection there yeah. it, it, rather than a computer telling what to do it's right Jonathan like you can't just say click yes and just expect that that's another thing with innovation in general it's like a lot of people assume that when you bring something like especially from a working environment like, yeah. like UK yeah. and XYZ like you just bring it uh, no. it would just work <laughs> no, I just yeah. know like, like, it doesn't work that way, <laughs> it work that like, way. Like, no, it's it's I think Nigeria actually forces you to innovate 
That's why I always say if you can do business in Lagos, you can do business anywhere because the system is always working against mm. you. Mm. It forces you to solve a lot of problems mm. more okay. than what you can do in the West. Yeah. So I, I've, I've noticed that uh, as, as a founder here as well. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, since we have a lot of um, listeners in the diaspora, are there any sectors that you would encourage them to look at for investment or in, in Lagos? In Nigeria? Yeah, yeah. For now, you know, to just be, to be honest, like there's not a lot of sectors like to come in. Mm. If you can, if you can, what I would say, because if I advise you to come into any sector, I have to be explain. I have to be able to explain how you should go into that sector. Yeah. Right. For instance, let's say fashion. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Fashion. There's there's huge opportunity in fashion. Mm -hmm. Like majority of us now. Majority Nigerians wear foreign clothes. Yeah. Even the lower income earners, yeah. right? And even the average income earners, people that work in banks and things mm -hmm. like that, you see that they wear foreign clothes, like, yeah. you know, cheap foreign clothes. They go to the market <laughs> yeah. and they buy all this. Thing. And this is a huge, if you go to a place like... Um, is it um, Balogun or something? Balogun market. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. So one day, see, one day. How was it? Oh my God. It, it's too much, it's too much <laughs> it's for me. Too much. It's too much. You know, so you yeah. can, if you see that, if you can value the total amount of transactions that is done in that place yeah. daily. Oh like, no, it's monstrous. So there's a huge yeah. market for fashion. Definitely, right? yeah. But how do you solve that problem? How do you take away transact? How do you tap into the Balogun market mm. like locally? You know, one, it's a manufacturing problem. So if you want to go into fashion, you cannot think like a fashionista. Mm. <laughs> you have to think like a, uh, like Dangote. Proper person, yeah. yeah, Jige, yeah you so. have to think like a manufacturer. Mm, Do you understand? Because yeah. it's a manufacturing problem. Mm. It's, how, it's about economies of scale. It's about how to manage, manufacture a lot to be able to sell cheap. What, what, since you, you've been in different businesses, right? What do you think is the business in Nigeria that has the largest margin for you that you've seen? All of them are good, man. Every, uh, oh, I mean, politics, man. Po <laughs> the, like, <laughs> politics is one thousand to zero. <laughs> but, uh, like, if, you, uh, if it's political <laughs> runs and things like that, you get like, ah, uh, oh if you, uh, there's dope. You can make some something can happen. In, they can make one Lona, and, uh, and you can make one money that you know believe. So, but if I say legit business, <laughs> questionable money, <laughs> you get like if I say legit money, scary. You know, if I say legit business, like uh. every business is good it's just how you are going to do it you, get, mm. you can make money from everything how you are going to leverage what do you have is the first thing what do you have what do you know that as a person what do you have is your mm. daddy rich do you mm. get do you have do you have a huge inheritance do you have property mm. do you have do you get like what do you have so first you have to leverage what you have do you get it? You exactly have, yeah. so leverage that so people that are coming from their diaspora moving to nigeria or african countries they don't i mean the only thing they have is probably savings somewhere and a couple yeah. of other minor things here and there. What else can they leverage? Like, then they should come and join a company. They should find a startup and join. They don't have to be the one with the idea. Yeah. You know, come yeah. and work. Yeah. There's so many people trying to solve yeah. a lot of problems that need the diaspora and experience. Yeah. Experience. You know, yeah. like um, since I met you now, like yeah. you know, I've told you a lot of things. I like yeah. certain things that you do. Many yeah. skills that you have that are difficult to get. Mm -hmm. So if I meet somebody that has worked abroad you know mm -hmm. with some multinationals or with some that has that experience and i'm like mm -hmm. ah, man, bring this thing into this company mm -hmm. but if you want to come and you want to be the one to do everything you want to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. like yeah man no cool better have plenty money you know? <laughs> 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 better have plenty money and you know so you know that's another thing you know so we need to encourage collaboration mm -hmm. we need to there has to be a lot of, there has to be so much i see ah oh, man every idea mm -hmm. there's like 500 I mean, people trying this. to do the same thing mm -hmm. you know like you guys should come together solve this problem and mm -hmm. you know so we need to encourage collaboration a lot mm -hmm. you know so, uh, that, that Nigerian mindset of uh, this is my my forte I don't uh, want to share I, you, so you have an idea I want mm -hmm. to you want to start fashion and you want to do everything yeah. you want to how now so you, you have to it's, it's too hard it doesn't make you know sense. you want to do fashion now okay you want to think like an um, like uh, like an um, like Dangote, then you know that how do you get tailors? Do you get, mm. How do you get tailors at scale? At scale, do you yeah. How do you get tailors consistently? Because if one goes, how, do you understand? You have to find somebody in the mm. local tailoring industry. It will shock you that they have associations, they have things like that. They have a way they communicate that you can never know. 
mm. as an outsider. You can never see it. You can, it's not online. It's not anything. But there is a network mm. of tailors. They have a they have a system. They have um, works, how yeah. they learn. Do you understand? Mm. Like how nobody can tell you categorically. They, yes, they will tell you that there are some tailoring schools. But we know that the tailor that we use did not go to those tailoring mm. schools. <laughs> the, those tailoring schools are catered towards like housewives. And so how do these people learn? Mm. Where are they learning mm. from? Do you get? So you have to understand that to be able to recruit tailors, mm. right? And, you know, so, so many things like that, you know. Um, you mentioned something great that you do, which I love. And you said that you teach people to become developers. Yeah. So I wanted to know, what do you think Nigeria can do to solve the problem of the brain drain? Because I, it's a serious problem. Like you say, Nigerians are very smart um, and everybody wants to jap off from this country. It trends yeah. on Twitter. That word trends on Twitter. Like, <laughs> every, every time day, there's yeah. a major incident. Fact, when you say yeah. brain drain, I was thinking, brain, brain, I don't know, jack by, jack by, jack by, yeah, yeah, it's today, a huge yeah. thing. So uh, what do you think, um, what are some solutions you think Nigeria can... Okay, let me let me think. Let me put an industry into perspective okay, now. Like, great. let's say medicine, mm -hmm. right? The health sector. You know, people are leaving Nigeria. Doctors are running away. <laughs> well, when the when the system gets a lot better, they will come back. But for now, the truth about it is like most Nigerians are not even. I, I and Nigerians complaining. Do you understand? Like. Mm. The about the doctors living, they are not, no, no, Nigerians are not well, really coming. one thing you said is that a lot of Nigerians, uh, yeah. one second, a lot of Nigerians will go and use like when they fall sick, the first majority, the first solution, first place they go to is a babala or See? what did I say? Do you understand what what I say? Say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, there's, there's, is the brain really being drained? Do you understand? Like the people that, um, the, the people that need, like me, I have access to doctors. Mm. I don't I don't miss any brain yeah. <laughs> I don't miss it. Mm. I don't no, 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 but, but like it, it, if it's a culture that if it's a phenomenon culture that keeps growing it, yeah, you're gonna start feeling it when you have a startup soon. it's a problem um, yeah, yeah and a lot of especially a lot of tech people yeah, they're it's now it's moving it's out to other places now it's hard yeah. to find good tech talents right mm -hmm. you have to keep training I know I one of my friend or family actually owns a tech club mm -hmm. and I've seen situations like that so it's like what happens when you're always going to have the case where people are traveling to other countries to look yeah. up for better prospects? And I never feel bad for anybody. Like anybody that wants to travel, should travel because I faced that problem and I solved it, right? Mm. I There was a time that was sad, I was depressed, I was trying to build a company. Anybody that works with me will just go blah, 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 blah. Do you understand? But what did I do? I started teaching, right? Mm. And I was able to solve that problem. And that, that problem yeah. is in the past. Mm. Yeah. Do you get like, I don't, I don't even, I don't think about it anymore. Mm. So anybody that any entrepreneur that feels that oh staff man solve the problem there's a solution there you know i want to open a company that does jackpot as a service there's so many there's so many there's so many there's a lot yeah especially there's with the new visa that that um tech uk tech, tech visa yeah, yeah. Tech there's so there's there's any country any there are companies that will get you to, to Canada yeah, what is, what's anywhere. the obsession with Canada they in this country they said there's more Nigerians that immigrate to Canada than Indians no but what is the obsession now? is it that Canada just opened the border for Nigerians to come in they're, they're actually quite an uh, immigrant friendly nation they're actually okay. in general they they need workers um, a lot of the West are facing problems as well with aging populations etc yeah. so it's a trend that's going to continue they do need skill and so yeah, Nigerians have taken advantage so are they still going there to do menial jobs or are they doing proper jobs so I, I've had mixed stories so some are landing jobs at good companies, multinationals, and some are, you know, sometimes if, you're, if your qualifications are recognized, they're just going there and starting low, like our parents did in the UK. Mm. They ended up having to start low and build up again. So I've heard mixed um, stories so far. Yeah. I mean, to me, the way I think about it, I'm a bit similar to you. I think everyone should experience both. I think uh, the best Nigerian is one that's experienced multiple Both societies sides, yeah. i think the exposure really helps with the nigerian mind mm. uh however i just worry about having a startup here it's becoming tough to have local talent that is good without like you say if you're not unless you're willing to train and do the hard work at the risk of losing that person later which is fine um it is it is it is hard to have so so one thing i i always say is like Trying to simplify things in it, in your company as as quick as possible and yes. automate it as quick as possible. Yeah, that's what we said. So that today. you yeah. don't have to rely on one key person that's yeah. gonna like hold your on on the chalk chalkboard, right? L let me give you an example. Let me give you another analogy. 
um, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars, right? And he, and he looks at it, ah, I need to go to Mars. Right now, there's when he wanted to go to Mars, there was no talent. Nobody had gone to Mars before. Nobody has gone to Mars before, right? Nobody, so many things that, so many problems that he's going to need to solve before he can get to Mars. There are no, there's no one available. Do you understand? There is mm. no talent. Do you understand? Mm. But it's not a, as a result of brain drain. The, the skill set doesn't just exist. It was not developed because the industry didn't think we were going to prioritize right. so, space travel. Now, let me, let me now explain what he did, right? So what did he do? He said, okay, you know what? He's going to first start by sending satellites to space, right? Because it mm. needs cash flow, mm. right? So he starts by sending satellites to space. He now looks at, mm, okay, I'm sending satellites to space. I'm doing okay. How can I make it cheaper? Okay, let me make my rocket reusable, right? The point I'm trying to make is like, if you want to start a company in Nigeria, a, a, you, want to, you want to create a startup that does fashion, mm. it's a, is, a, step the by step. is linear, mm. do you understand? You must focus, and from day one, when you get in, right, the first thing you do is you leverage, right? Mm. You leverage whatever you have to get some money. Right when you have some money, then you build cash flow. You can build cash flow in that your industry. I want to start. I want to be manufacturing clothes, sewing, blah blah blah. I can start by doing retail. Right, mm. I can start by doing retail to build some cash flow. Right, when I have my cash flow, you know, I can now start thinking about maybe I can start a fashion academy mm. so that I can acquire sewing machines. I'll be using those sewing machines to teach mm. while I'm understanding recruitment processes. Do you understand the point I'm saying? Do you get like? Mm. It is complex. Every business you want to do, any industry you want to go in, it's complex problems, complex businesses inside one. Mm, do you understand? Yeah. You must keep your head up. You must make sure that you are not you are making money. Do you understand? Mm. It's not about the end goal. Do you get? It's about okay. Day one, yeah. It, it, exactly. So you have to know how to. But I, I think a lot of these startup people are ref, are, are referring the part of making money by raising money. <laughs> oh, that's all about about you when I first met you. <laughs> that's what you're like. I was like, are you trying to make money? Are you trying you, to raise you, money? We were here talking about building a legacy. It's like mm, when I clocked how to raise money. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, I, I that worries me yeah. a bit. Raising money is good. It you know, that's me. another way of making money. That's another that's way of leveraging. Some people have noticed that. Yeah, yeah. 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 you know, that's another way of leveraging. Let's, let's you know? play this uh, game quickly. Yeah, right? So let's do it's, that. this is one where we pick up a random question and then we ask the guest and then we talk about it as well. Yeah. So okay, um, I'll read the question and and then we'll, we'll take it from there um okay Ooh, interesting but you you've been you traveled a, a couple of countries as well right yeah. okay that's good so what is one thing you wish you knew before moving to nigeria moving to nigeria yeah. ah, man, i mean nigeria i have no yeah. <laughs> get? but i just like when when you travel down and you come to nigeria what's one thing you've you've kind of realized the differences okay maybe? difference between like abroad and yeah. nigeria Hmm. Well, what's, there's many things. Like I mean, it's, <laughs> there's, there's so many things. You know, I think that's a very difficult question. Do you ever do you ever feel like okay when I spend my, when the time I spent in this country or this place, I missed this there, and I wish that was here. Yeah, that's one to ask. Yeah, yeah. is there something okay. you see abroad that you wish was in Nigeria? Well, I, I wish there were like more races. Races. Really? Yeah. Oh, like different races, God yeah. forbid. I was going to say, you want Nigeria <laughs> like, to be more multicultural? Yes, I wish Nigeria Whoa. was a little more. So you you know, just the Lebanese more. and the Chinese is not enough for you. You want more people? Eh, the ones that they are very small and they are hidden. Like, we don't get to meet them. Do you get oh, that? so you think they should be mingled in between society? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, want to, I want to be in class. Like, my son now yeah. is um, in his school. He has, like, some... There's some kids in the school from other some oh, white kids, yeah. and I, I always I, I look at him in school and I'm like, Man, this is this must be something. <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know what? I kind of get his point because he's now thinking like a liberal white person. Where, yeah, I, where I, they I, think, oh, I wish like it's more much cultural than where I live. I mean, I'm very surprised. That's very interesting. It's interesting. I'm that's a very interesting take. Because I will be the, the opposite side. We're all side. the opposite. We like that. We like that. We only see black faces. Black people, yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's what uh, we because, like. Yeah, because we grew up as a minority. Exactly. So it makes sense that you want, want the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Like, let them be a minority here. I wish we could colonize mm. some white people. <laughs> <laughs> I could, you could ship some white people over. That's you know, so I would, interesting. It would be nice, you know. Like, mm. okay, let me let me explain it. When I went to South Africa for the first time, 
I loved it. Like South Africa. Two I people do. have said they love South Africa today. I, yeah, think, we're, I yeah. think we're in the wrong country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, you, I, I, I swear, yes. Yeah. If you go to, to you to prefer as somebody coming back, I feel like you should go to South Africa first. Yeah. Before you know, it will be more like a soft landing. Mm. The Nigeria, right? coming to Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just kill you straight to <laughs> yeah, like South Africa is fantastic because it, black people everywhere. Mm. Mm. I went to South Africa many many years ago. Then what I didn't like was that when you go to like. Banana Island, you know, how we have banana, like the, mm. the richest neighborhoods or whatever. Everybody's white, you know. Okay. You know, like, yes. you know, so black that, people yeah. are minorities there, GS yeah, so gardeners that, yeah. and you know, I want it. But once you just drive out like these black people everywhere, yeah. you know. So that was that was a little bit of a problem, okay. you know, when with South Africa, right? But when you go to the mall and what I loved was okay, for the first time, that's why I saw like a black and Indian together. Um, no, like mixed a child. Mm. Somebody oh, wow. that was in South Africa. Yeah, that's I've never seen it. I've been to the UK. Yeah, in Indian Africa. You see though. all those. You you see it. In, you see like um, all sorts of mix in the UK. Yeah, and, You know, yeah. but you don't see black and Indian. Like I don't know mm. about it's now. Very rare yeah, because yeah. it's very two very strong cultures. Yeah, very Do you strong. Understand? Like, yeah. yeah, very. So you see that yeah. like it's like everywhere you get. It's like everywhere. <laughs> That thing was, I'm like, okay, and they're so beautiful. And you know, you see them everywhere. And like, ah, wow. So it was very nice. It's very nice to see a country where majority black people mm. and minority white, white people. people. Yeah, interesting. You know, it's interesting. very, it's, it's, very it's, it's very nice to see. Me, um, what's the one thing you wish you knew? Yeah, one thing I wish I knew yeah. before moving back. Ah. So I didn't realize how expensive being a man in Nigeria is. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm. Like <laughs> <laughs> everyone no. in the studio is you know, triggered. <laughs> you know, like you know, like just like being expected to just kind of cover a lot of things, yeah. right? So in the UK, it's kind of we just get by, we're mm. good, like we all kind of just figure it out and everyone mm -hmm. just move forward. But Nigeria is like it's just assumed that you cover most of the things financially, mm -hmm. right? So I didn't, I didn't, that was a culture shock to me. Mm. But I liked it because it now made me feel more responsible. Mm. Like I had no time to just like, I just had to be more responsible. I had to make sure I'm getting money. I have to make sure I'm on top mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Like, and in, and in a way, it was good for me. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So I liked that. But then again, it was like, I, well, as soon as I came in, I was like, people always, always expecting money from me. Like, obviously in general, yeah. but as a man, it's like, it, it's a bit more. So mm. that was that was quite quite a shock, mm. yeah. What would you mm. say? I think for me, it's probably business related. I think I underestimated the Nigerian factor of doing business. Mm. And whatever you estimate for your business, times it by two, the time projection. Timeline, yeah. Yeah, I think that, I think that I just, the Nigerian factor, maybe I thought it's like 30%, but it's more like 130. It's I huge. Because like yeah. you know in UK, they'll tell you, oh, save six months and start a business. Like yeah, six months yeah, salary, yeah. we should be able to give you enough runway. Yeah. And you know, in a way, it kind of is true. Like after yeah. about six months, you mm -hmm. should have some gains some revenue in somewhere. Yep, yep. But in Nigeria, it has that minimum if you don't have your 13. customers ready lined up before you start your business, yeah. it's going to take at least a year or two before you get your first customer. Yeah. But it's once they're in, it's kind of, it, it, it gets better, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think, um, yeah, that that was it for me. Um, and yeah, yeah. Mm. And start this HR. I think for me, it's just the the HR thing <laughs> is is a is a big thing. Um, do you do you feel like a lot of businesses in Nigeria are not doing what they advertise? Now let me let me come to this right. Yeah. So like let's say for example, um, you decide to start a business where you're selling diffusers, like perfect mm -hmm. diffusers, right? But somebody just called you and said, "Oh, um, I have perfect diffusers. Do you have like scented paints? And I've got this big project in like Abuja where you have to paint this whole building with scented paints, for example. Mm -hmm. The person will leave the diffuser that they're selling <laughs> and they go and do the scented paints yeah. and they come back. But they're the diffuser business, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like in Nigeria, yeah, no matter how much you kind of put a fine line in your business, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Something else that you didn't even think about would just come in yeah. and you're thinking, Nah, no, that's more money. <laughs> I yeah, have to yeah. pivot quickly. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's that's it now. I've heard that. In fact, yeah. in fact, I've heard that, but it can be problematic. It can because be because yeah. I heard that um, what some of them did was invest in a company um, that was offering like a certain amount of returns every month, and they would abandon their business model and go invest in that company. And the company then turned out to be a scam, and it's now affecting 
you know, it can be so, it can, it's, you have to be very careful. Yeah, with that, yeah. but I've heard it's a thing. Well, yeah. when you put it the way you, like if I sell diffusers and somebody says I should come and sell something, I supply something else, mm -hmm. like, Man, that's Nigel. Mm. That's what I'm saying. That's Nigerian that business. Yeah. Like, that's that's, that's, that's Nigerian business. Like, exactly, yeah. that's, 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 especially if like I'm a retailer. Mm. You know, if I'm a retail, if I retail this, you know, I can retail anything else. And that's one that's one thing that I learned from the Able culture is like, so if you go to an Able man's shop, right? Yeah. And you ask for like an electronic, let's say you ask for a fridge freezer, that's like Samsung fridge freezer, and he doesn't, he only has LG. He's not going to tell you, oh, no, I don't have LG, you can go. He'll be like, oh, wait, come with me. He'll take you to his friend's shop <laughs> that has Samsung. And then he's going to sell the Samsung to you. And then he will take his cut out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Nigeria. So it's like, yeah. it's like you, yeah. in Nigeria, you never say no yeah, to opportunity. No. You yeah. say yes and figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, yeah but that's so. also a problem. Again, yeah, because because <laughs> they overpromise, they over and then they under deliver. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to smell those things. It's, yeah. it's very good in your analogy. That's a very good thing. Mm. But you have to be able to smell it when it's not. Yeah. yeah. If you're the buyer, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're the buyer, you have to kind yeah, of. Yeah, like I, all these things you're saying now for me, like. Me, for it's me normal. It's, like, it's normal yeah, like, that's what I'm saying that's what I'm really feeling you guys like as I'm listening to you guys and I'm really seeing where you're coming from and I'm I feel so bad for like so many people he said that you've you've hit me a few times actually yeah. you know, I'm just feeling bad for you know, people that are probably watching and thinking about coming there's a learning curve there's a learning yes. curve, yeah. a yes. learning curve. Yeah. like don't rush yeah you know don't don't keep your hold your money learn you can't <laughs> You can't, you can't even, you need like, you, you need a long time. Mm. Maybe somebody should even start a course on it. On this thing. Oh, oh yeah, we are. Do that. Yeah, 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 Start yeah. a course on moving to Nigeria. Yeah, we are, yeah. And, and maybe a consultancy. Yeah, I think yeah. there might be a lot of money there, you know, yeah, just sure. to yeah. advise people. I mean, how to make com, this. you can book consultancy exactly, sessions. Exactly, yeah. They're already, put the phone number, the shop, link the phone in the bio. There. No, 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 you can. And, exactly. and you're, you're right. Because we we don't want people to make the same mistakes that we have. Oh my yeah. God. The amount of mistakes I've made here is just yeah. unbelievable. Sometimes you look at me and think, are you stupid? I've asked myself. <laughs> I literally, even though I actually think like, I'm stupid. Like, like, <laughs> I, like, I've never been like fully broke in the UK, but I've been yeah, fully yeah. broke in Nigeria. You'll be broke or you'll be broke. Perhaps. They are billionaires in Nigeria. They have gone broke. Uh, uh, see, that's okay. such a good point. I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. Eh? They are billionaires <laughs> in Nigeria. I'm talking about billionaires in Nigeria that have like properties. Mm. A lot of properties that have massive but billionaires. They still go wiped out. That will not have 30k. <laughs> I've had what? They still have those properties. Oh. But it's not. Do you understand? Because Nigeria is cash. Okay. In, if you go to a bank in the UK, right, you need money. Mm. There are so many things the bank will look at. Right, mm. that okay. Oh, you have your house, right? We can uh, do leverage. something with your money. You can leverage mm, your house and give you some money. Yeah. Uh, you have this. Nigeria, the they don't care about anything. What the bank offer you in Nigeria will be even so bad that you they don't, don't even want, want to this. You. You. <laughs> they don't even want to give you because they don't want your house. Do you get? Because if they collect your house, they have the stress they used to sell, sell it fast. is yeah, stress. Very good so point. they don't even. The only thing the banks care about in Nigeria is cash flow. Mm. Yeah. So the best business to do the most successful people in Nigeria, go and look at it, right? Even before they got into politics, right? You see that a lot of people became rich first from lifestyle, mm. right? So selling beer, selling, you yeah, understand? Yeah, things, yeah, selling food, selling things that people use every, every day, day yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now every they day. can even sell, now, if you go into like the inner lands, you know, Lagos now has the island, mm. has the mainland. Then that's the major land. Mm. Mm. Do you know the major land? After Lagos. Uh, no, it's not after Lagos. There are some places that. like uh Alimosho, local government. Okay. So like Egbeda. Okay. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can say but I agree. Mm. Yeah. You get some in Do you okay, get all those yeah. places that are like you know, you have to, after you get to the mainland, you still have to drive like another one hour. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm supplying electricity in those places. So I know, I know, I know what you're talking Pam, about. Pam energy. So, <laughs> so um once in those places, right, you find out that people, one of the cheapest things you can get in those places is beer, mm. right? So if you go to a bar in those places, if the manufacturer gives them the beer at 200, they will sell the beer at 250, mm. right? So what you see, there's a culture, when you go to bars there, there's a culture of how many bottles did they drink? Okay. You yeah. So you listen to people and they're having conversations of, ah, ah, this guy, they drink 
three crates. This guy, this is, <laughs> do you understand? Like, this is, this is a, a conversation, like, yeah. which is, you can't see that on the island. If you go to the island to drink, mm. you can, in fact, I don't, I, when I move to the island, like, <laughs> if I drink two bottles, I can drink liquor, I can yeah. drink a bottle of Hennessy or whatever, yeah. right? But when it comes to beer, you drink one or two, mm. right? But on the mainland, people are drinking eight, nine. That's true, because we're the largest consumers of Guinness. That's fact, right. So, yeah, we've been we, that for we, a while, yeah. Exactly, or we're island, drinking yeah. now. Why is it like that? And I think it's a problem. It's even affecting those people because it will affect productivity, no doubt. I'm telling right? you, everybody wants to just go and chill and drink. <laughs> so, now, when you go That's to the bars, slow. <laughs> so, so, when, so. That, when you go to the bars, right, you, in fact, there, there's now another culture. If you want to set up a bar now, the business model mm. is you have 10 customers. 10 customers will pay for the drinks of 100 people. So what happens is one person goes to the bar, like one person that is averagely successful in that area, mm -hmm. right? And the person, all his friends, all, everybody, the, his gets, everybody that just comes and greets him, mm -hmm. hey, bro, 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 whatever. He can buy beer because, so they just, so there's a lot of free beer. Mm -hmm. they, so that is a very, very unique business. Mm -hmm. Now for the owner of that business, what it creates is cash flow, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, even though he's not making a lot of money, mm. right? He has a lot of cash flow coming in. He has in a lot of cash flow. Mm. He's going to that. leverage that cash flow, mm. right? And he's going to leverage that cash flow into other... So you see someone like Obi Kubana, mm. right? Mm. If you if you listen, find these videos online and listen to his story, mm. how he started, he started with a bar, mm. just mm. one bar, right? And he built that cash flow, built that cash flow. Get now he can do anything. Mm. Right. Get, now he can do anything. So it's about cash flow. Mm. FMCG. So if you're coming into <laughs> Nigeria... The first thing you have to think about is cash flow. Mm. How Very do you build cash flow? Yeah. And the easiest way to build cash flow is starting a beer parlor mm. or doing <laughs> or doing something small, <laughs> mo smaller margins, but like what tiny, I wasn't expecting like the what place FMCG, <laughs> like uh, smaller goods, like quick buys, Indomie, like all this nonsense. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. uh, Indomie supermarket, cheap canteen, mm. something like that, shower mash shop. Mm. You will be surprised at how many guys in our generation that you see today, mm. you know, that started doing so Shawarma, well. Yeah. I've started from Shawarma. Very lucrative. I've started from that. Shawarma. Yeah. So many people started from Shawarma. <laughs> All so these young guys are buying now, it now, 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 a lot of people are doing now. Uber. A lot of people are doing Uber now, mm. right? But when I finished from school, right, it was Shawarma. You get now a lot of people come out of school. So the new generation now, when you come out, if you graduate from university in 2020, 2021, whatever, if you come out, you don't have a job, maybe you are not the most brilliant or whatever, mm. then the first thing you can do is Uber. Mm. Just convince somebody to give you some money and do Uber. Uber yeah. You know, that's mm. the easiest thing to do. Or maybe you buy a bike and do logistics, mm. right? Mm. You know, what those yeah, are I the, see a lot of people doing that. Because you get yeah, those are the easiest things like, to I've do. I've got Uber, I've got um, one delivery driver here and there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's those are the easiest businesses to do, right? In my own generation, it was Shawama. <laughs> I shit you not. It was Shama. So a lot of people, a lot of my friends that are very, very successful now started that from Shama. Very interesting. I've you know also, I'm knowing someone right now that owns a very huge no, financial institution that yeah. just started with a nightclub. I, I, I have a friend, my richest friend said he owns a nightclub. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So it's about cash flow, mm. right? It's just, so when I come into Nigeria, the first thing I'm thinking about is cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Mm. Yeah, 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 cash flow. How do I get cash flow first? Mm. Then you can now, when you get cash flow, you can leverage that. And, you know, so don't think of your idea first. First, carry your idea and put it. Yeah. Like, let this idea first chill first. <laughs> when this idea first is chill, let it just be chill. But, but this is the thing, though. It's better, that's it's who you're getting your money from. Mm. This is what I tell you, Shadow, one more time. Yeah. <laughs> About this fundraising <laughs> stuff, right? Like, basically, yeah. If your money is coming from somewhere else, you mm -hmm. need to package properly mm -hmm. and try and get that money. That money, yeah. <laughs> But if your money is coming from Nigeria, just think about what people do and need every day yeah, yeah, and yeah. just meet that service and yeah. just keep it moving. Yeah. yeah. Because it's too different. That's why I see some people say, okay, yeah, they've got these ideas, great tech ideas, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking about making the money in Nigeria. They're thinking about how much can I use this to raise? Yeah. Yeah. Just what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> and, and the foreign companies, honestly, the people bringing that money from abroad are just thinking about market share brand because they know that mm. Africa doesn't have a choice. Is that market share real though? Yeah. yeah. Africa, see, whether you like it or not, uh, 
Nigeria is going to change. Yes. You so you're, you're very, I was going to talk Facts. about, you're very, you're very like, um, like positive that there will be a change in Nigeria soon. It's happening already. Let me tell you if something. You open your eyes, let me put it like this. Let road. me put it it's like happening. this for you. If you see what's happening in the US, right? They're fighting. Biden is making noise that they must all use solar and wind energy now, right? <laughs> don't don't hear on solar. Panafrica.com. No, 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 don't hear on solar. I, I, please. I, I, I know, no issue. Eh? What I'm just saying is like, if you look a little bit deeper into it. The reason why they are making those decisions, those policies, is because of growth. Mm. There's no more growth in oil and gas. Do you get? So if I have a lot of billions of dollars or whatever, my money is just going to be chilling in oil and gas. Mm. There's no growth. No I'll be growth, getting yeah. cash flow, but there's no growth. Mm. Do you understand? You know, there's no... The Chevron is not going to... The value of Chevron is not going to double. Mm. Do you understand? The share value is not going to double. There's going to be cash flow mm. to pay salaries and do some things. But the value of the company is the no, same. Yeah. So, and um, the Western economy is almost designed to always... It's always like a bubble. It must, not, it must continue to grow. Mm. If not, it will crash. Yeah. Right? It has to grow. So... They are trying to force the economy to grow into something else. Okay, now everybody must drive electric car. Everybody mm. must, you know, everybody, you know, that's where they're looking for growth. Shout now, out. that one is not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Ah, uh, maybe may be at this. Wait, wait, wait. So wait, it, it's it's not it's it will work, Jonas, but it will not solve the problem, mm. right? The only place where there's any opportunity for any growth, as a fact in the world now is Africa. Facts. Oh, yeah. Like Facts. exponential growth. Yeah, you I get, get your like, point. I agree with you. Final I agree frontier, with you. they're claiming. Yeah, but... If you want to invest in something, mm. you get like, the only place where there's any sign of growth Facts. is Africa. Like, if you want to kind of create those... Right? So, so, so those so world leaders, yeah. they know that... <laughs> It is now in their interest. It has never been Facts. in their in their interest to solve yeah. the problems of Africa, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But now it is in their interest to solve the problems of Africa. Because you yes. can make money now. Yes, yeah. because they they have to come back, mm. come inside. Here. They yeah. have to bring their money here. Yeah. You know, so they are going to start influencing our elections. They're going to start looking at the candidates. Facts. They're going to start looking at okay, what's going to. They are going to start looking at making decisions outside. Just uh, send me your oil. Send mm. me your. Cashew, send me your. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then they're also a lot of them are also wanting to live somewhere else. They, I mean, the way they've designed the city is kind of flawed. Yes. The, 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 the nations it's a little bit flawed. That mm. the people are now seeking more nature. People are now seeking yes. more. Like their mental health is being affected a lot. Definitely from so the they urban they just lifestyle. want a whole different scene. Mm -hmm. So we, we not only is the African soil a better place for people to live. Yeah, yeah. Is also better good business because yeah. the margins are incredible here mm -hmm. right so people are wanting mm -hmm. to come come and do business here it's just that once you get through all these hurdles that we're facing now yeah which i i call them feeding issues because once tech really goes in a couple of good leadership here and there there should be a good progress mm -hmm. we, as the aspirant we feel positive but like we're not nigerians and it's funny that we are nigerians but like we're not like born and raised lived all through right mm -hmm. so we we feel interesting that someone who's born and raised and lived in Nigeria yes, also it. has that yeah. positive mindset mm -hmm. because the every Nigerian speaks to that now this place is dead we're jacked by yeah. everybody mm -hmm. wants to leave mm -hmm. so to get that perspective is very interesting but do you feel like other people also feel that way in Nigeria like there's a majority that feels like things are going to get better if you're smart yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if, if you're smart if yeah. you if you if you know if you're an, an entrepreneur it has to get better like mm. I. I my it ha that's where my cards are. You yeah. get like even yeah. if I even if I'm delusional, you get that's my delusion. Like it has to. You get mm. I'm going to work towards it every day. I work yeah. towards it. It has to get better. Mm. You get so the the those of us that know that it has to get better because that's what we are betting on, betting, yeah. right? Yeah. Like we are going to keep believing and yes. we are going to keep pushing it. You know, that's so true. it has to get better. You know, but I believe it's going to get better. Like, Amen. We don't, it's a good place we don't, to end. Yeah, so sure. I was going to say that. No, thanks yeah. for that. Thanks yeah. for Thank that. You. Like, yeah, Thank you. Thank really you so good. much. It was yeah. really good to have you on. <laughs>